Hello, welcome to the queue. Today let's talk about anti-aircraft guns and some house rules that go along with it. Uh, we'll look at the beginning, uh, how the anti-aircraft gun worked uh, and was changed in Axis and Allies. Uh, then also Global War and it's uh, took some radical steps to uh, improve the anti-aircraft gun, uh, make it more viable, more playable, um, more useful. Let's take a look at the pieces right now. All right, so let's look at the anti-aircraft guns, the way they started. Let's slide that over here. Your anti-aircraft gun cost five IPCs. Um, I don't recall too many people ever buying them in the original classic game. Um, they got a defensive roll of one, and based off how many planes were attacking, that's how many dice you got to roll. So in this uh, battle here, amphibious assault uh, on England, you've got six bombers coming in uh, to help out with this amphibious assault. So that an aircraft gun would get to roll six dice and however many ones, that's how many planes that uh, Germany would lose in this battle. Pretty straightforward. Uh, one die roll per plane attacking a territory that had an anti-aircraft gun in it. And it stayed that way for quite some time until they came in with a standalone anti-aircraft gun. Five IPCs, uh, they reduced the amount of planes that the anti-aircraft gun could shoot at to three. So if you had three coming in, one anti-aircraft uh, gun, let's put a British out there, you would get three dice at one. Uh, even if you had four coming in, you'd still only get the three dice at one. You still, however, with the facility in there on a strategic bombing raid, you would get one dice per plane. So that doesn't change for the facility, and including the two facilities that were added, the naval base, the air base, the uh, industrial complexes, whether it was minor or major, one dice per attacking plane. Pretty straightforward. So the first real departure from the anti-aircraft gun from Axis and Allies after its revision of um, the facilities and, and, and factories having built-in anti-aircraft um, to the actual anti-aircraft piece on the board that defended the territory was Global War. And what they did, they have, they use a 12-sided dice. But they went ahead and not only as far as defense, you know, a roll of three it gets a hit. They also added it on the attacker. So now the anti-aircraft gets to attack with the dice and defend with the dice. Uh, that was pretty, uh, pretty interesting concept. The same method as the Axis and Allies uh, standalone anti-aircraft guns that were added. Uh, one dice per three planes uh, in the combat. And then, of course, that is a first round only unit. Uh, after that, you can take these as casualties, but they do not get to shoot at planes again. The other thing that they did, uh, which I think is, is pretty critical to people actually purchasing and using them a little more, was they changed it to four IPCs on the purchase. Now, Looking at the German build charts uh, and infantry or unit charts as well, there are four IPCs. I know that some of the units in Global War cost different per country. Um, I don't know that any aircraft, now that I think about it, are, are they different, you know, whether it's Europe or US or whoever. I wouldn't think so because that's not that critical of a unit. Um, I think they do that mainly because, you know, like Japan, their tanks. They didn't really invest a lot in tanks, so they actually cost more to build less useful tanks. Um, so we'll move on from Global War. 
Uh, I really like what they did with that, the, the attacking, move it to the attacking and, and lowering that cost to four IPCs. The Academy Edition um, is at five IPCs uh, and the anti-aircraft only gets to fire one dice per anti-aircraft gun. And the interesting thing on, on the Academy Edition is they've, they've added the attack as well. So whether you're attacking or defending, you can bring that unit in, uh, shoot at the attacker or defender's planes, and then after that first round, you know, it, it goes away or can be used as a casualty. The Deluxe Edition uh, uses the eight-sided dice, and it's the same, same rules. Uh, you get one or three, plane, up to three planes, per any aircraft gun, attack or defense, uh, a one or a two in, in, in that game. I say that, let me look at the charts here. Nope, they are still or attack or defend at one. So it's still a roll of one is a hit, two is a miss. Uh, an interesting twist on the deluxe is that now if you have an anti-aircraft gun paired with a fighter, there's a combined arms effects, like say you had an infantry and an artillery, it boosts that infantry. So the anti-aircraft gun will boost, you know, one fighter, you know, up one point on, on its attack. So that's, that's kind of an interesting twist, nice little, little house rule. So you've seen the uh, out-of-box Axis and Allies anti-aircraft. Uh, the facilities get to fire at each plane. The individual anti-aircraft guns get to fire up to three planes per each gun. Um, that part is standard throughout the other uh, two, uh, Global War. Uh, they reduced the cost of the anti-aircraft gun. They also added it to the attack uh, capabilities. So they not only defend, they attack. Um, the Deluxe and the Academy keep that attack going forward to make it a little more useful. Um, the difference in those two versions is Academy's just shooting at one plane per one anti-aircraft gun. The Deluxe still retains the one to three planes per anti-aircraft gun, uh, but it also adds that twist of uh, combined arms modifier with a one fighter. So one anti-aircraft anti gun, one fighter. Gives you that plus one on the attack. So here are some other rules, house rules that I've played with here. I've played with at other uh, locations, uh, read about, discussed, talked with, you know, um, different kinds of rules. And they're all kind of interesting, you know, some more than others. Um, the first one I, I want to go over with is the ship's uh, naval anti-aircraft. And I've played it two different ways. Uh, the cruiser, to make it more of a useful unit, a lot of people don't like. Um, they think that the cost is too high for what you're getting on the attack and defense. Uh, but to sweeten the pot a little bit, they'll use the... Uh, anti-aircraft role with the cruiser so for each cruiser it's basically like an anti-aircraft gun um, so you've got some planes coming in to attack these cruisers you know you'll you'll get one dice up to three you know per each cruiser just like a normal anti-aircraft piece uh, and it's just a first round you know roll a one get a hit nothing else you move on uh, just for the first round uh, deluxe kind of took it a step further uh, I think a little too overpowering maybe uh, they give the full attack of the cruiser and the full attack of the bomber so they're not rolling a one against the anti-aircraft they're rolling you know on, a, on an out-of-box game so this cruiser would roll a three and the battleship would roll a four and that takes place before so those two planes have the option of, of dying a lot more than just, you know, rolling a one if, if you had the anti-aircraft 
uh, capabilities on a cruiser like like in an aircraft gun. So that that's pretty steep. You could lose some planes pretty good in the Pacific and some of those larger naval battles. Uh, your your air force could be wiped or reduced, you know, pretty significantly by the time you get to the first round of combat. Uh, another one I like uh, is the flyover rule. So you've got your factories, you've got some anti-aircraft guns on the coast. Uh, now say England wants to go in and bomb Western Germany. Well, they can go one, two, three, and come around. They don't fly over any anti-aircraft any anti guns except for the one on the facility they're bombing. So there's, there's your normal role there. But let's say they were going to hit Paris. Well, the only way to get to Paris you know, is to fly over one of these anti-aircraft guns. So they would fly to here. There would be an anti-aircraft gun for flying over that. You go in to hit Paris. Now you've got another anti-aircraft gun. And it looks like my battery is flashing red. So I'm back from the battery disaster and I was going over the flyover and aircraft rule and to me that's kind of a realistic one because you know when US and British bombers as soon as they flew over the coast you know towards their targets you know whether it was in you know Germany or uh, Romania or wherever they were flying over they were flying over anti-aircraft guns and they were always taking pot shots at them and where this could come in handy uh, in some other cities, you know, certainly um, Calcutta, because you could string out, you know, uh, any aircraft there in Burma as well, and in the territories around Moscow, because Moscow gets bombed a lot. So I can see where that could be very helpful. And you could also throw in the fighters, you know, Germany had a fighter station there, you know, they could intercept, but. That would be a, a plane house rule, and we're talking about anti aircraft guns. Another possible anti aircraft house rule would be the uh, changing these from four down to five so that you can allow mobile anti aircraft. And they could come in at five, and you wouldn't want to make them the same as a tank, because who would buy that? But the, the premise would be you'd have to be using the rules such as Global War or you know the Deluxe or Academy where the uh, any aircraft get an opportunity to participate in attacks as well as defense. Uh, that would make this uh, a viable option and you know especially with you know some mobile uh, anti aircraft you know you could move you know Germany I can see that being useful um, maybe not so much Japan, um, but maybe the Allies as well uh, in some different locations on the map. And HBG has these sculpts, um, you know, they're pretty cool. Uh, they don't have sculpts for every country, but um, depending if, you know, you were going to use it or not, you'd have to designate or, or paint some, you know, for the other countries that might participate. I mean, I wouldn't see... Um, Russia having a need for that unless they were actually going on the offensive and, and by that time you know usually that game's over if that happens. The last house rule version uh, is kind of a, a damage version and I'm setting out some dice from the, the different games. The, uh, the damage version kind of comes from uh, a house rule for strategic bombers where they can take a hit like a battleship and, and get damage and I've played that in some different types, types of games uh, over the last couple of years and it almost seems like that's a little too much because you can never really shoot one down um, which isn't you know that kind of goes against the historical reasons but um, if you add a damage roll so say it's one more than what the the uh, the roll is to be like on a six-sided dice you know a hit is a one well if they roll a two then that would be a damage so the same with 
I figures I twisted the dice. Same on the eight-sided dice, you know, a one or a two. Now, on global, it already is at three for a normal anti-aircraft roll. But to me, to go to four for damage would be too much. So I think I would back that one down to a three to take the damage. Um, and, and really, the two might be too much for that. Um, you could add an additional roll. Uh, if you roll a two, you get damage, then you roll it again. One, two, three, it's damage. You know, four, five, six would be nothing. I mean, you could back that down a little bit. For the eight sided dice, I think it works out perfectly. Um, but it, it, it's an interesting way to add damage, you know, to all aircraft. And some of the games with it, that have the damage on the bomber, you know, they have to return to an air base uh, and repair um, for two IPCs. Uh, I know we've played it where you don't you just an automatic repair, you know, like in Global 40 when a battleship or carrier repairs, it would just automatically repair itself. Let me set up a simulated battle and give a demonstration. And I'll probably just pause it and set that up and uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, so the fictitious battle is set up. Uh, we've got two uh, strategic bombers uh, doing a, a strategic bombing raid on London, as it should be. And then we have four infantry, a tank, and an anti-aircraft gun, along with three strat bombers attacking the French and British in Normandy. And their defense is an infantry, uh, artillery, and an aircraft and two fighters. So your first roll, and this is a, this you know is the six-sided dice, you know basic axis and allies, you know what you're using, but the same mechanics would work for the eight or twelve-sided dice, you know in in various games. Um, just adding that one for damage. Uh, so the strategic bomber uh, attack in London. <clears throat> England rolls a three and a two. Well, a two is a damage. So the damage bomber cannot participate in the attack. Must land at the nearest available uh, friendly space. So that, that would be Holland, because that would be one, two. So that's, that goes back. He goes on to continue to bomb that. That steps over. The next, the Battle in Normandy. The German anti-aircraft rolls a two, so now your option for that fighter, uh, and you could choose either one of them, would be Paris if you still had it, or southern France. So you could move, you know, one away. Now they're the defender, so technically they could fly four, but you got to go to the closest, which would be Paris or southern France. So France returns fire and gets one, two, so there's another damaged plane, which goes back to Holland. Now you continue on your attack, just like if you, any normal battle that an aircraft, which usually misses. So now these two planes are sitting in Holland. They may, well, they probably do. They take, take that with their casualties. Um, these two planes are sitting here, now they are vulnerable if you've got nothing in Western Germany to, to try and protect them or to land some fighters there um, so you don't lose your strat bomber so they're in a bad space so the net effect is you've got a damaged plane whether it's you know a fighter or a bomber I guess uh, this one would still be in southern France you wouldn't be dead so they're in they're damaged but yet they're in spots that maybe not strategic for the next turn or vulnerable vulnerable to attack on the next uh, you know allied turn so that's kind of a little twist um, kind of gives it a little bit more punch to the anti-aircraft gun uh, it takes some planes out of the battle without you know being too overpowering and, and actually killing more planes in the battle so one thing I forgot to mention uh, on the damage rule on that six-sided dice uh, if rolling a two is, is a little steep for you um, and I can see where that might be the case the damaged airplane uh, place a marker under the one that you're going to damage 
uh, it rolls one round of combat and then it has to retreat. So that might make it a little uh, easier on the pallet. Um, but hopefully one of these anti-aircraft rules you can find, you know, whether it's, you know, already in a game somewhere or, or a, a version that you like, uh, you can add, uh, actually you can add several different elements of several different of these house rules, you know, in, into one and, and play it that way. See how that goes. I planned on doing a solo game of G40 next week and that's why I did the anti-aircraft house rule uh, right now because I'm going to plan on using the damage anti-aircraft roll so when it rolls uh, a two on the anti-aircraft uh, and we'll do attack and defense as well so whenever that two pops up uh, we're going to take a plane out of the action and retreat it as damaged and I'm not going to charge uh, any IPCs to repair it. It'll be just like the standard battleship uh, carrier. You know, it just repairs at the beginning of the next turn. Uh, the other house rule I'm going to use on this G40 game is the map. I'm going to use the deluxe map with uh, the additional IPCs on some of the territories so there's going to be a little more income. Uh, there's also a lot more convoy boxes. Uh, a couple of the territories are rearranged. Um, so we'll play a normal G40 setup on the deluxe map with the anti-aircraft house roll. We'll see how that goes and hopefully I can knock that out next week. Uh, there's a big game on Sunday and it's not Access and Allies. I'm going to be wearing, in the case you didn't know, the Mahomes headband wig. I'm going to wear that to the Super Bowl party so don't tell anyone. It's going to be a surprise and hopefully you'll be rolling some dice next weekend uh, or sooner. Till next time. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing's happening. Go on. Get out of here. Go back. <laughs> she must think something's up. Oh, are you going to do that? Come on. Stay focused. Hello. Welcome to the queue. <laughs> oh, come on. It's surprisingly warm in this hat. Wig. No, oh, come on. Ah. Say hello to the board. Nice. There's the camera. All right, now, beat it, you bother me. Oh, put that thing over here so I can see what's going on. No, don't go upside down. What the hell's up with that? Differentiation, differentiation. I just blew that word, so let's scratch that. Craft gun. And it looks like my battery is flashing red. That sucks, I'm gonna have to finish this later. Dang it.